Um, my name is Alessandro. Um, I'm with a cat over there. It's not my cat. Um, I'm a front-end developer at uh, Vodafone UK, and uh, you can tweet me at that uh, weird handle that I got. Um, I uh, work with Vodafone for about um, seven months now, eight months, and uh, previously in digital agencies and an AI company. Uh, not that you really care about that. Um, what uh, my previous background was for Vue was that uh, I had to migrate an Angular JS 1.5 stack using JSON data locally within Pages, and that um, yeah, it wasn't pleasing. Let's say uh, it wasn't. I mean, the GIF is horrible on Angular, but you you get the point. Um, it wasn't the best experience that I could find. Um, so I had to decide the stack uh, coming from Angular JS, and I decided with Vue because I love Vue, and uh, decided for Next because they needed SEO mostly. Um, so I was familiar with Vue JS, but um, the config-driven um, approach in Next was amazing, and it didn't really need any introductions. Uh, that, that's the whole config and it allows you to um, just specify every option that you need uh, and extend it without needing to eject, as uh, the previous speaker said. Um, the folder structure, I'm not gonna f uh, fuss too much about it because uh, it was given already, uh, but you literally have this structure. You can change it if you want. Uh, it's configurable, uh, but why would you? Um, it, it's great. Um, you have the pages. Um, let me try and zoom. No, it's not zooming. Anyway, um, you have the pages folder uh, that is basically reading the routes for you. It creates and generates the routes um, for you uh, as you kind of type the names. Um, the plugins uh, are very easy to set up. Um, you just import them and view.use and you have the plugin running globally. Um, Again, uh, uh, I'm not gonna s stay too much on the config because uh, the documentation is very good and you can read all about it. Um, again, I'm not trying, uh, this is basically half the slides that I got. Uh, I wanna do a live demo, but um, it's not great um, with this kind of uh, setup, but I'll try to be slow and kind of take my time. Um, but just to show uh, the results, um, that's a 20 pages application and it's got 300k um, and that's not me improving on optimizing this is just the standard kind of minified uh, gzipped um, version of it um, ssr uh, is a bit complicated uh, before we go even any deep about it it's good to know that this it will come up very often uh, and this doesn't tell you anything about the error. It really doesn't. It's not. It's not meaningful. It's not um, uh, something that you can say. Oh, okay, I'm gonna go to this page and fix this. Uh, this is very complicated, and the, it's mostly related to what server side does and what client side does. Uh, if you you have to imagine your application as two bundles. One is server. One is client side, and. Your client side bundle sometimes is different from your server side bundle. And what Vue and Nux does is that it kind of matches and it diffs the two. Uh, and it, if it does find, if it finds differences, that's basically when this happens and you're kind of screaming and uh, pulling your hair out. Um, this is mostly fixable with um, a kind of a hacky way, but um, if you happen to find this often and you have some components that use the window object uh, like DOM or uh, document dot or window dot, um, you might want to use this no SSR to begin with to kind of isolate the, uh, the culprit and the, uh, that way you can kind of uh, narrow down what's going on and uh, which component is responsible for that. In my case, Vue Media was using, you know, uh, window uh, dot width. Uh, inner width and it was kind of um, breaking on the server side because obviously you don't have a window. Um, so that's good to know. Um, please do not use this on no SSR too much because it's uh, not 
it's basically not rendering on server side so your crawlers won't see anything um, right so let's move the mouse um, I want to show you what I launched um, last month or a couple of months ago um, which is part of my blog post that I'll share with you later um, so you've got my link here um, which is also in the slides uh, that I shared in Meetup um, this repo is kind of a starting point I would say uh, it's not optimized for production it's not um, secure is nothing it's just a boilerplate so you have to take it and optimize it yourself um, but it just gives you the step-by-step uh, -step kind of um, introduction to what I would do if I were to use uh, this repo and uh, use WordPress with it um, you basically uh, download this boilerplate and I've done that already and and within the boilerplate, you got um, the next. Basically, this is an optimized uh, next uh, project. It has some examples. It has some pages, and um, and it has a WordPress folder. Um, why WordPress? Um, WordPress is um, a free CMS, and it's terrible for security. Sometimes um, it's kind of um, a jack of all trades. You can have all the plugins you ever imagine. Um, but for me, uh, when I saw that they had a REST API and it was uh, usable with custom fields, I was like, yeah, uh, we don't have much many, you know, a big budget, uh, we're going to go for that. And it actually turns out is quite quick and it's quite impressive. Um, in, within WordPress folder, we have um, uh, the basic structure. So you can just copy paste this into your project, uh, maybe, you know, uh, rename this config sample uh, with your details. I'm not gonna type my WordPress database here, uh, just so you know. Um, but um, once you do that, you can basically start. Um, and I have a project running, which I hope I can load with this. And this project basically is a standard uh, WordPress installation. I haven't added anything, uh, but you do start with some plugins. Uh, it's a lot of plugins actually. Um, I included these because they are free and they are quite useful. They are not all needed for this, um, but the most important one is this one: Advanced Custom Fields. Um, this plugin allows you to expose to the REST API. Um, uh, JSON structure of your pages and your custom fields. So by doing so, you have the uh, the ability to create pages here in the pages uh, dashboard, and in each within each page, you can specify which custom fields you want to show. So you know, I got a hero section, I got a YM section. It's a nice lady there. Uh, the process, um, you got you know some. You know, sunflowers is always good to have. Um, two sunflowers, actually. Uh, and, you know, you can fill in everything and you can match and um, wire it up with you, within your pages. Um, and coming back to the actual page, you can see that I've got an index page and I've got an error section. I haven't done the others because uh, it's just an example. But this error section here takes the ACF, uh, the advanced custom fields, uh, that data is coming from the API itself. Um, so if you take a look at this structure for the hero section, we got um, title, we got description. And if we go back to, uh, to the um, page here, um, we have this hero section component. Um, so going back to the component here, um, we go to UI, no, sec, sorry, no, I don't even know my repo, okay. Home, hero section, and we have um, a kind of a HTML structure of that hero. Uh, this is like the usual hero section that you've got, uh, you've got a title, you've got a description. Um, so this data is all coming from WordPress, it's all dynamic. Uh, if I change it in WordPress, it will, uh, unless it's cached, uh, it will change straight away in your front end. And there is a decoupling from WordPress to front-end that is very useful for performance, first of all, for security and you know, other reasons that um, uh, are like customization uh, is infinite and you don't have any limits. Um, 
you can see here it's just taking a ACF prop um, and that prop is uh, just being used in the body. Um, one thing that I mentioned about the SSR is that you want, might want to make sure that because that data is asynchronous, you want to make sure that it's always present when you load the page. So I've put some blockers, some kind of guards here. Um, so I'm saying if there is a CF, that, that, if that data is populated, um, this section will render, otherwise it will not show anything. It, it just literally doesn't render in the page. So you don't have any um, you know, downtime or uh, you, you can lazy load this and uh, it will load when the data is coming, uh, when the data is there. Um, and in the actual home page, you, uh, you can do this many, many ways. You can do async data, you can use fetch, uh, which is um, uh, fetching data for Vuex. Um, but in this case, I'm using fetch uh, and I'm taking the uh, config, uh, I'm using the config to uh, retrieve the data from WordPress. Um, and then I'm committing that data to store. So that home data here, is what I would use uh, to retrieve the ACF. Um, down in the uh, computed, uh, got some methods here. So in the computed section, uh, in computed methods, we got a, a cached version of the uh, store. Uh, I could use a getter here, but um, uh, this is just you know a, a small example here. Uh, store state homepage.acf is what I'm interested in. So that's the custom fields of the homepage. Um, and that home page is defined here in the config. Um, so uh, this is this could be any any config that you want. It's just a URL. Um, so I'm basically hitting the uh, you know the WordPress API and I'm hitting the wp-json endpoint. And that endpoint has um, kind of a path that you can follow. Uh, in this case, I'm using Pages, um, and that Pages has an ID. So the ID is not, it's nothing but this number here in the URL. Uh, it's just eight in this case. So if I hit um, WP, uh, API mustache design, WP JSON, actually, let me just do it. Um, so if I go to eight here, you should see a JSON file. Um, so this structure is what we use in the front end then. Um, the ACF object here, is what uh, contains the custom fields. And you can see that you've got a hero, all the sections here. You can make these components. You can uh, you know, decide that a custom field will generate a component <coughs> dynamically. You can do all sorts of things, uh, make it very customizable, or just limit um, the customization to some aspects. Um, in the hero, you got the title, you got the description, and some images. These are all the objects that um, WordPress gives you as default. Um, so that's very easy to kind of customize uh, because you, everyone is used to dealing with JSON in uh, for data in the web. Um, coming back to the structure, um, you can see that um, in the store here we have our Vuex store. Um, I got some methods here as an example. Um, not, none of them are kind of used apart from a few. Um, and down here, you got a server init. This is a specific uh, Nuxt method uh, action, actually. Um, this allows you to uh, load on the server side uh, any API that you might need. In this case, I'm not using it, but um, as you can see here, you can load um, some data and commit it to store before the actual page renders. Uh, so that's quite useful, uh, depending on your needs. Um, why is that? So in regards to WordPress, um, I kind of uh, wanted to give you a brief run around of the plugins. Um, all, you, all you see here is a few plugins that are uh, mandatory for this setup. Uh, ACF to REST API obviously allows and exposes the uh, advanced custom fields plugin um, to the REST API. Um, anything after that is not mandatory. Anything here you can deactivate. Um, I'm only leaving this on because you know you might need a form. You you can send a post and get on the content form seven, and you know there are some hooks that you can use. Uh, 
the, un, the other mandatory plugin which you can rename and you know make your own is this. Uh, this just basically um, removes some things that um, are not pretty in the um, JSON. Uh, you can take a look at the um, source code uh, later in the repo if you want to see what it does, but it's literally a uh, like minor um, design things that uh, are useful. And everything else here is just helpful. It's not mandatory, so you can remove it if you don't want to. Um, I would suggest to keep this on WP cores um, and specify your um, your um, allowed domains here. Obviously, don't put star, that's bad. Um, <laughs> that's not what I would suggest. Um, that's about it. So the uh, WordPress API here uh, exposes, as I, as I showed, uh, all the pages um, that you might find. In this case, I got three page, two pages, and uh, each page has a ACF um, key. That key contains the custom fields. Um, so you can do anything with this. You can even not use custom fields. It's not it's not mandatory. Uh, you can use the REST API in other ways and just use the content or use Gutenberg with it. Um, you know, you can do anything that you want. Um, you you can also create custom posts. Um, for example, in my case, I created a case studies, which is in the plugin that I created. Um, that case studies uh, is just a post type, so you can specify um, custom fields that only target case studies and you know have custom fields for that. So this way you you can create as many post types you want. You can do filtering, you can have a specific endpoint in your REST API that only takes case studies. Um, so that's also, again, uh, a limitless customization that you can do. Um, apart from that, um, I just wanted to show you some website that I've done with um, with this, just to uh, demonstrate that you know you can do pretty complex things with it. Um, let's see if I can show it properly. Um, so this is a travel agency. Uh, it uses Nux and WordPress API. Everything you see here is customizable. So the, from the title to the sliders, um, that's very slow, but uh, it's smooth, trust me. Uh, <laughs> um, so everything here is a custom field and you can, um, you can customize everything that you want. Um, it's very highly cached, so it's, um, because they use high res images, it's a luxury website. Um, I had to do some op speed op optimization, some caching, and that is not as easy as um, you know installing the boilerplate and just plugging it in. Uh, but it it does help to go to Discord or um, the forums uh, to chat with the core team. They are always there. They're always available, and there are some members that are not in the core team that also uh, are very helpful. Um, so, apart from that, that's the live demo. So I don't want to keep too much uh, on showing stuff that I've done. I'd rather have you ask questions. <laughs>